Suppose we want to know the true average price of gas, that is the population mean. So we walk down to the corner gas station and see that the price of gas there is $3.35 a gallon. We know that that can't be the true average price of gas because this is the price that we observed at one gas station, and we know that there are going to be other gas stations that charge other prices. So let's go to every gas station in our neighborhood and observe the price of gas, and we see that the average price of gas amongst all the gas stations in our neighborhood is $3.42. But we know that this can't be the true average price of gas because there are lots of other gas stations that we haven't looked at. So suppose we go to every gas station in the entire city. We look at the price of gas at each gas station, and these average out to $3.38. But this still isn't the true price of gas because there are other gas stations throughout the state that we haven't observed. So we go to every gas station throughout the entire state, and we find that the average price of gas is $3.39. And still, this isn't the true average price of gas because there are other gas stations throughout the country that we haven't observed. So suppose we go to every neighborhood in every city in every state in the entire country and record the price of gas sold at all these gas stations. And we find an average of $3.40. This now is the true average price of gas throughout the country. But notice a problem. Collecting the information to come up with this true average price of gas is impractical and often impossible. The solution is instead to construct a confidence interval. A confidence interval tells us a range of numbers over which the true population average is likely to be found. To calculate a confidence interval, we begin with a sample measure. We add and subtract from that the standard error of the measure multiplied by a critical value. The critical value reflects the degree of confidence that you're looking to attain. Now, there's a trade-off here. I can be extremely confident about a statement that is irrelevant. For example, I am 100% confident that the temperature at noon tomorrow will be somewhere between negative 400 and 1 million degrees. I am extremely confident about a statement that has little relevance. Conversely, I can be unconfident about a statement that has much relevance. For example, I am 0% confident that the temperature tomorrow at noon will be between 68.15 and 68.16 degrees. That's a statement in which I have little confidence, but which has much relevance. To construct a confidence interval, we begin by collecting a sample of data, in this case, the price of gas, and we calculate the average or the mean of that sample of data. We get, in this case, $3.34. Next, we calculate the standard deviation of these observations, in this case, $0.08. Cents. Using this, we construct the standard error of our sample measure. The standard error of a sample mean is the standard deviation of the observations that fed into the mean divided by the square root of the number of observations. Or in this case, 0 0.08 divided by the square root of 32, or 0 0.014. Next, we have to decide what level of confidence we want. That is, how confident of a statement do we want to make? Typical confidence intervals are made at the 99% or 95% confidence level. You could also make a statement at a 75% confidence level or any other confidence level you choose. Let's suppose we want to make a 99% confidence statement. We take a standard normal distribution and split it into three parts, where the center part contains 99% of the distribution. And we ask the question, what critical values divide the distribution in this way? In this case, the critical values plus and minus 2.576 divide my standard normal distribution like this. I now have all the ingredients to construct the confidence interval. My sample measure is 3.34, the standard error of the sample measure is 0 0.014, and the critical value is 2.576. This gives me a range of $3.30 on the low end and $3.38 on the high end. So I would make a statement like the following. We are 99% confident that the population average price of gas is somewhere between $3.30 and $3.38. The plus or minus part we call the margin of error. In this case, the margin of error is four cents. So we could say we are 99% confident that the population average price of gas is $3.34 with a margin of error of plus or minus four cents. Now there's a trade-off.
trade-off to be had here. I can make a statement that has a smaller margin of error, but in doing so, I must give up confidence. For example, suppose I'm willing to make a 75% confidence statement. I look at a standard normal distribution, and I ask the question, what critical values divide my distribution so that 75% of the distribution is in the center? And those numbers are plus and minus 1.15. I now use these critical values in constructing the confidence interval. My sample mean is 3.34, plus or minus the standard error, 0 0.014, multiplied by my new critical value, 1.15. This gives me a range of $3.32 on the low end and $3.36 on the high end. So I can say that we are 75% confident that the population mean lies somewhere in the range of $3.32 to $3.36. Or alternatively, I can say we are 75% confident that the population mean price of gas is $3.34 plus or minus a margin of error of $0.02. Cents.